I had a mechanical gremlin show up today in my 2004 GMC Envoy. All of a sudden, my fan motor started blowing about medium to medium high speed. And as you can see, adjusting the fan motor settings has no effect. Now the craziest part about this is when I turn the car off, the fan continues to run. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, and once again, welcome back to my 2004 GMC Envoy. You probably clicked on this video because you're having the same exact problem, and in this video, I want to show you guys how to fix it. My problem, I have isolated to this blower control module, and that's exactly what we're going to replace today. It's going to be a pretty straightforward approach. I'm going to show you how to do it. These are all the tools that you're going to need. I have a 7 millimeter socket to get these two bolts or two screws loose from this access panel underneath the glove box. You're also going to need some butt connectors. These are just Dorman 22 gauge. There's the part number there. You can pause that. It is 85435. And then, of course, you're going to need the blower control module itself. This is a genuine GM part. And there is the number there. To access the blower motor control module, all we're going to have to do is remove this access panel down below, again with these two 7mm bolts, and then replace the control module. And we do have to do a little bit of wiring and a little bit of splicing, because as you'll see, the old control module is slightly different than the newer one. So again, to access the blower control module, all we have to do is remove these two 7mm bolts. And now we can just pop this access panel down. And you'll see once we get this panel open, there are a couple connectors that are attached to the back side of this panel. All we're going to do is just remove these clips from the panel and then we'll be able to pull this out of the way. Now that we've got these clips out of the way and this access panel is out of the way, we can actually see the blower resistor or the, the blower control module, which is right back here. And then of course, the blower motor itself is this big cylinder right here. So as I was crawling underneath of here to try and get access to all of the connectors, I realized that it's going to be far easier just to go ahead and take out the glove box. And those were simply three 7mm bolts down along the bottom. Remove those, have a second set of hands if you've got one, and go ahead and take that glove box out of the way. It'll make accessing this connector for the blower motor a lot easier. Now that we've got all of the connectors out, all we have to do is remove that blower control module with a 7 30 seconds socket. And here's what the old one looks like. All right, so here's just a quick comparison of the old control module versus the new one. As you can tell, the new one is a different design and it does not have an integrated wire connector for the blower motor. So that is why it comes with this harness that you have to do just a little bit of splicing. But again, to do that, I picked up a pack of these uh, 22 gauge butt connectors from my local car parts store. There's the part number. These are Dorman. Nothing special. So I'm going to go ahead and get these wired up. I'll show you which connections we need to make, which ones we need to cut, and then we'll be able to put everything back together and hopefully that solves the problem. So let me show you guys the wires that we have to cut and splice. Here is the connector to the old module and on this connector there is a red wire, a black wire, and a purple with a white stripe. And then on the harness, the new harness, we have the same wires, black, red, purple. Again, we're just going to splice these, connect these, 
with these butt connectors. Now, I'm not going to go through an in-depth diagnostic test on how to test voltage to each of these connectors. There's a really great video by a YouTube channel called No Nonsense No How. I will leave a link to his channel down in the description below. If you guys need to know how to do a diagnostic on voltage and voltage drops on these connectors, be sure to check out his channel in the link down in the description below. We got the new wiring harness spliced in to the old wiring harness. Now all we have to do is install the new control module, make our connections, and then test everything out before we button it all back up. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I showed that when I pulled the key out of the ignition, the blower continued to run even with the key out of the ignition. And so to fix that, what I ended up doing was just pulling this 40 amp fuse. And if you go to your fuse block, that's going to be fuse number 35 on the block. So this is going to tell us, I guess, if the, the new resistor or the new blower control module actually works. Alright, so we got that plugged in. I don't hear any fan motor running, so let's go inside the car and check it out. Alright guys, moment of truth here. Let's go ahead and get this fired up. Let's go ahead and turn this to on. Alright, so I hear the fan on. Just low speed. And of course the fan was not on with the key out of the ignition. So let's go ahead and run through the speeds here. Yes, listen to the hat. Let's go ahead and get it up to full speed. There we go, there we go. All right, guys, so that was a success. It was, in fact, the blower control module that had fried or short-circuited or whatever malfunctioned. And just replacing that did the trick. Now, I will have a link down in the description below to that GM replacement part that I used. It's going to be a little bit more costly than, uh, you know, some of the aftermarket products, um, the aftermarket blower control modules that you would pick up at your local car parts store. But I figured with 333,000 miles, that original GM blower control module had lasted this long. Might as well go ahead and spring for the GM this second time around. Now all we got to do is get all of these wiring harnesses just put back onto their respective spots on this access panel. Get that put back in place and then get the glove box back in place and I will be back in business. Guys, that was another successful repair on my 2004 GMC Envoy. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. Let me know what kind of problems, issues, projects you guys are working on on your Envoys and Trailblazers. That's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for stopping by the channel, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.